Hey YouTube, today is October 31st, uh, Saturday, and yesterday Woob released FFF number 362. And uh, so we're going to go unpack that together today. Uh, if you like this sort of thing, make sure you hit that like, subscribe, ring that bell so you get that notification every time I post a video. If you have a question or a comment, feel free to leave it in the, uh, in the comment section below. Everything we talk about today will be in the description. So with that, let's get to the video. All right, here we are. Friday Facts number 362, Menu Simulation, Spidertron, Ghost Building, and a confirm button posted by Kovarex and V45, my buddies. Uh, okay, Menu Simulation by V45. In the last FFF, we presented that now we have the capability to show real game simulations in the tips and tricks. Naturally, we asked ourselves, well, what else could we use this technology for? We dreamed about this multiple times in the past, but the technology roadblocks didn't make us think too seriously. We like the main menu to back in the background to be a real animated simulation of the game. Ooh, uh, tra similar to what Transport Tycoon or roller coaster games have. Instead of things like cinematic trailers, we always represent the game in its true form, and the menu background does not follow this logic. That's true. Uh, also. Anytime we improve any graphics, a static image immediately gets older while a game simulation gets updated automatically. That's right. Um, we create a variety of scenes that demonstrate some of the features of the game from first miners all the way to artillery and Spidertron. Ew, the screen is quite zoomed and the factories are rather small. It's more of a demonstration of the game's features than a showcase of the best things anybody has ever built. Seems a randomly rotated where all of them uh, have to play once before any repeat. Oh, interesting. Okay. The main menu should include both Factorio and Woob software logos, right? That was new from 1.0. The Factorio logo has been used in many places, from prints to trailers, uh, many times already. Its concept is a logo entity like, uh, uh, like any other. It integrates itself into the world being built there, if at all possible. The Woob logo is different both graphically and in concept. We can't represent it as an entity, and it makes a lot of sense that the Woob uh, is a layer underneath the world of Factorious. We're using it as a special water tile. Oh, neato. Okay, so look at this. Look how it fits in. There's, it's shadowing. It's like it's a 3D, and I just saw some trees covering it. Right there. There it is. Neato. Cool. Looks like a tile itself. From now on, the Factorio Entity and Woob Water Tile are both buildable in the... Oh, in the map editor without the use of mods. Hey, Nito. Oh, this guy. I, I've wanted this guy forever. I like that for my, uh, for, uh, for my videos as well. The Water Woob only works well in specific positions. Repeats as an 8-8 tile platform, so fitting in his ex existing factory can be tricky. Right. To make it clear, behind the menu... To make it clear that behind the menu is not your factory, every scene that the logo has a logo in the exact same position. And the screen has a vignette-like shader around its edges. Cool. Yeah, so can I make... Can I make my own scenes then? To rotate in? Or are these scenes controlled? It looks like we've created a variety of scenes demonstrates features of the game. First miners all the way to Artillery and Spidertron. I would like a directory that I could I could build my own stuff in an editor, put them into a directory, and then they cycle through my scenes. How about that? The scenes are moddable. Oh, okay. Chat just says, live chat just says, hey, the scenes are moddable. Good. That is really nice. Um, if you can make uh, you can make small s s uh, for Sims tips and tricks, it sounds like you can do a small sim for the menu screen, right? That's neato. And the description says there the scenes are moddable. Neato. Okay, I'm down. Very good. All right, Spidertron from Cobrex. Spidertron was the last thing added to 1.0, and people apparently use it a lot. Yes, we do, which means we received a lot, a ton of great feedback, uh, and the polish of the it could be polish the polish of the spider tron will be generally worth it yes here are the big tweaks we made 
building preview. The Spyrotron now moves its leg when being built. Oh, needable. So it's almost build almost always buildable. I never noticed it. I always just put it on an open an open uh, place. Look at there. Oh, look, and its legs flip around and oh, and it sh and the legs shrink back to not be in the water, and it shrinks back from the building. That's neato. Okay. Not look at the polish on that. They're right. Uh, that is the right word for it. The polish on it. Spiders try not to be in the way. Spider Tron. Here we go. Next. Spider Tron now moves its legs out of the way, so buildings can be constructed. Oh, that applies for both ghost and manual building. I'll see that again. Let me move out of the way. Oh, it just it parted. It, it just did that a little, little. Excuse me, so I could build that solar panel. That's neato. Okay. And Spider Tron avoids rails. The decision not to make le uh, legs collide with the train makes sense, and you can also control leg position precisely. And also, they they are also invulnerable. It looks kind of bad when a spider is in the middle of the rail, and the train just goes through it. So we made the spider tron legs unable to step on rails. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, you could just put a you could just put a spider tron leg on a rail, and then the train goes right through it. Okay, and just it'll just avoid the rails now. All right. A little bit more realism. The changes require the change required us to use one or more collision layers for the base game, as rails needed have their own layer. This would uh, this would leave even less square or less spare collision layers for the modders, since our said found some unused bytes in the entity data, which basically was free. It's free real estate. Uh, we could increase the collision mass bit size from sixteen to fifty six without increasing data footprint. What this means for modders is that there are now open collisions from layer, multi-layer 12 to all the way to 55, and the mod conflicts will be less likely. This to help uh, managing new collision layers. Clone wrote a small uh, Lua utility library called Collision Mask Util, which provides a bunch of helper functions. It is hoped that if mods use functions to provide the helper library, it can allow mods to work together without hard coding specific cases. Good. If you have any suggestions for the functionality of this helper library or any questions, please let us know. All right, Spidertron item color. We fixed not only the Spidertron item colors didn't show in the inventory, also fixed the way items are rendered on ground and belts. This includes spider remotes, blueprints, upgrade planners, and such. Okay. Oh, I see. The remote now has a Spidertron color indicator while it's on the ground instead of just always being white over on the left side. On the right side, you can I can see one is yellow, one is blue, etc. And then and one's black. Some then and yellow. The Spidertron itself now remains colored even outside the inventory. Right. See, so there's a black one, a green one, a yellow one. Neato. Oh, and look, the blueprint book, too. The blueprint book now has its cover picture on, and the upgrade planner now saves its values, right? It has a, has a stone furnace, and the blueprint as well has its own uh, logo indicators and the decon, decon planner. Okay, cool. Look at the polish. This is so great. This is exactly what, a, what should be in a 1.1. 1 .1. All right. Spidertron logistic request. One of the main uses for Spidertron is to let them build using the personal row ports. Correct. Uh, but the lack of an automated resupply method made the process less flawless than intended. This applies to using them for combat as restocking ammunition's repair packs had to be done manually. Copying space Spidertron settings. Now Spidertron supports copy-paste, which not only copies the color, name, and logistic, logistic request, but even the equipment grid contents, which takes it from the player doing the operation if possible. This removes the tedium of setting up additional Spidertrons. Okay. So uh, we actually had a good conversation about how we didn't want Spidertron to replace artillery. So if you think about what artillery is, artillery is a automated way to deal with biters it it uh, goes to a certain place it refills automatically uh, it goes to another place and shoots biters automatically and then repeats 
uh, and you basically never have to you once you set it up you never really have to remember it you have to just keep the supply running which is kind of similar to everything else Spidertron operates in a different way. You you cannot you cannot set it to automated back and forth. So you have to deal with it every on every time it moves. You can't set it to patrol, right? It's a very common thing in video games to be able to I want you to patrol from A to B back to A and then never stop, right? On on patrol. That's a very common common um, video game feature. Uh, also having the in, having the ability for inserters to fill it up or to be able to add, give it a schedule such that um, I could run, go from A to B, wait 20 seconds, go back to A, wait 20 seconds. Presumably, I fill up at A with my robots. I go to B, wait 20 seconds to kill the kill the biters. I go back to A to fill up, and all I do is go backwards and forwards. That would essentially obsolete the artillery. So we don't want we don't necessarily want to do that. We want to fit Spidertron in its own niche, uh, in its own place in the game. Doesn't replace anything, nor does it really um, does it really break any new barriers other than fewer train deaths and crazy rockets and you know kill biters. But by the time by the time you get to this point, you should be killing biters pretty easily now. You have the option of doing artillery, you know. So anyway, uh, interesting. This this is a good one though to set up additional Spidertrons because that is that is a common thing that, I mean, from our first time the our first time exposing and uh, unpacking these Spidertrons ourselves. Um, I mean, my buddy Veldek, the very very first thing that he did was make six Spidertrons and go and go slaughtering everybody. And he's clicking and he's he's got this army of Spidertrons moving across the map, which is super fun, right? So this is probably where, what drove uh, drove that is if you know if one Spidertron is good, well you got to chase it with five more, right? <laughs> okay, Ghost Building by Kovrix. I think I may like this one. What are these gifts? Oh, okay. Hey, hey, hey. All right, I'm seeing too much already. Okay, so we have the Spidertron working well, and it can semi-automatically request stuff and build in remote places but it just amplifies a different problem we had in the game for quite some time. And it's the awkwardness of ghost building. Kinda, I do, I do a fair amount of ghost building. I was doing definitely some ghost building on the last stream on Thursday, I was. I was doing a lot of it, okay? Ghost building is a great example of feature that was technically complete, but I personally avoiding as much as I could because I was missing all the quality of life improvements Available with the manual building, right? Fast, ghost fast replace. Oh, look, it's got a ghost on the icon. Okay. The most frequent thing I'm missing is the fast replace, especially with belts to either upgrade them or just change the direction. Changing the direction is a big one. I agree with that. Logically, the first thing to solve, to make things easy, uh, not easy for us, the ghost building must be able to fast replace not just ghosts, but also entities that are already built, right? Which basically amplifies these features for all that will follow. Ew. Okay. This doubles or more the amount of combinator combinations that have to be considered internally, but I believe the result is worth it. So do... Do the robots now come in and turn them themselves if you ghost build it? I'm, I'm assuming I'm holding shift and I'm dragging opposite, right, the way over here. And now it's just saying we're going to turn those, but there's going to be a bot is going to come and flip it around for me, I guess. I'm going to feature for just this one case, open up floodgates for all the other QOL improvements once you get used to one. Uh, I expect them all to be there. This means that all the belt to underground belt splitter underground pipe, fast replace, and more. So we just did them all. Oh, okay. So an underground to an underground. Yep. That's a big one. Uh, this use case here, I do this one. So that one is new. I don't think I've ever done that one, but this one all the time, where I'm ghost building, and then I would, ha would want to do an underground, 
but then it doesn't block it doesn't cut out the ones in the in between the two undergrounds like those four would still remain that's good uh this might mean yep uh chat says uh, uh Celia says it might mean that you can you can ghost replace a balancer right on top of a bus of belts boom that's a big one that is a great use case steely well done i i have to do that all the time i gotta go in i gotta cut one i gotta rip it all let it all filter out i gotta rip one up and then i can replace it but this you're right that's that would be a uh, thing that would be a great use case uh power pole connection another basic problems of ghost was the power poles Ghost did not show wire connections, uh, and it did not work for circuit connections as these just had to be bypassed. So the groundwork for this was already done. This means that it really wasn't that hard to implement. Not only did the ghost show connections, also show connections inside a blue ooh inside a blueprint. Oh yeah, okay, that is true. Once a ghost. Once ghost poles started to show the connections, we could completely remove the logic of revived poles trying to connect to new poles, as instead it followed the predetermined connections from the ghost state. So the process is more deterministic from a user point of view. Here comes a nice cherry on top. We have this logic in place, making blueprints to preserve the wire connections could be implemented for almost for free, so the game now supports it. And a problem like this could finally go away after years and years of repeated suggestions to make this happen. Over the years, most prominent argument against being implemented would be that how it would be managed, the connection of blueprint entities already existing in the world. A solution we missed is so obvious. The connections inside the blueprint strictly following the original, while the connections to the entities already existing on the map being already created as before. So you should be able to use blueprints as before, even though you don't care about the connections. Uh huh. Cool. Okay. Build by drag. Yes, this is good. I want to do this. Build by drag is another example of how we had to work for ghosts. Had had, had to work for ghosts as well. So now it works for all the currently supported entities, poles, undergrounds, and belts, and underground pipes. Apart, f yes, the pipes especially because I would have to. I would have to, I couldn't do the t -t 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 -t, uh, that I could do on a place when I do underground pipes. Um, that's a big one. I do that all the time, but I have to rotate the pipes, or I have to do it once and then I have to paste, 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 paste with the copy paste tool. I can't drag and build with ghosts. Apart from ghosts, there is one tweak uh, to building by dragging poles. Previous logic seemed to be fine. This is a big one. This one right here. That one is horrible. I hate it. I hate it so much when I'm dragging. Yep. Um, uh, all I do is click and I drag and I drag, click, 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 and then when and when it's time to finally join it, it doesn't work. There is one spot that reaches both of them, but it never it doesn't work. Remember the last position that could connect to any pole. Once the current pole can't be connected to anything, last known good position. Right. This logic almost does what we mean by say build dragging but what we really mean in mind is to build a connection between the last pole as far as possible regardless of any poles to see so things like this doesn't happen this happens all the freaking time right there there was a spot so we fixed that and this this is what happens to my mouse and my face and my and my brain every time is <laughs> yay now look at that we fixed it yiffy that is a good use case Good stuff. Continue button and confirm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Continue button and confirm by Covrex. This was an example of a final tweak to FFF 360, so it was basically a mandatory. Uh, it was this one right here is confirm. And it ser serves its job fine. Now you continue right into uh, you can continue right into joining an M in multiplayer game, hosting a game. However, it started later a bigger subject as to cancel versus a continue struggle. The main motivation to start on this topic was uh, was this dialogue. It happened to us countless times. We just set up the item, set up the value, and press E. Oops, I need to do it again and confirm the item is dead. Yes, uh, uh, absolutely. The general rule is when. Uh, that when users in your UI 
wrong way, do a wrong way again and again and again. You can either really try and teach them to use it properly, or you can just make the usage correct. Internally, the E key and the escape key were doing the same things, but in our mind, not really. Right. Right. Escape means no, and the E means yes. So there you go. Typically, the user sets up something in game window. When they are done, they close it with E. Yes. This connects the E key with confirmation, what is done rather than cancellation. This realization leads quite straightforwardly to the change we made in game, which is actually stupid, simple, and a good sign. E is now confirm, same as pressing the green button. Escape is the cancel button, same as pressing the X button. I mean, that's, the uh, yeah. Yep, that's right. Once it was made to work in all the relevant windows, it felt very natural to start using it in many different places, and the game feels more fluid. Yes. That, that is a quality of life achievement that we will, uh, we, will, we will get back years of our life in time. Right? That's pretty great. Uh, we even add a special sound for clicking the green button. Oh, neato. And confirming them with E so it all clicks in place. Oh, neato. It's a special sound for clicking the green button. So we feel satisfied. Click. Oh, yeah. We hope you have enjoyed reading some 1.1 changes or upcoming changes for 1.1. If you have any thoughts, feedback, let us know at the usual places. All right. So live chat told me to uh, come back here and and check the forums on the Spidertron and the legs. So I'm just going to scroll down here, and someone was apparently worried about their about PvP and Spidertrons and just making a bunch of uh, rails. So here we go. Clonin posted this picture. Super dense stacker and Spidertron just walking through it. And you can see the le Spidertron legs just kind of really carefully put them put their uh, uh, put the legs in between the rails, which looks nice. All right, and then you scroll down a little bit more. Let's see who's uh, who's getting in here? Oh, Nephrims. Does rotate work on Go Sense? Jesus, it's a great question. Oh, look at this one. <laughs> and you make it a super mess in here. And then Spidertron will still find its way. And that must be I click over here with the remote and I click over here with the remote and it'll it'll uh, tippy toe over there. That is cool. Oh, and he and he and the cloning did the custom scene. Uh, Clonin says, oh yes, mods, you will be able to define all your own simulations if you want. If not, there are no simulations. The old system of single menu background will be used. Oh, cool. Neato. Nice. That is great. <laughs> all right, let's launch this rocket and get out of here. What a great FFF. Uh, a lot of quality of life stuff. That's really great. All right. What a nice little FFF. Lots of good quality of life features coming in, especially the ones with the with the, with the power poles dragging and being able to close the gap between what's there and what is, uh, what is not, not yet there. That was a very, very common one. Plus being able to click and drag um, ghost underground pipes and underground belts. That's a big one, uh, especially for uh, for speedrunners too, to be able to do that a little quicker. Because a lot of times, speedrunners will be out, will have bots in the air, but they'll be out of uh, out of material. They know they have material back at the mall, so they can just they'll just uh, they'll stumble through some clicking and uh, and a dragging of uh, clicking of ghosts. But now you can just click and drag ghosts if you need to uh, need to summon some uh, material from bots. It's going to be great. All right. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. If you uh, if you like that sort of thing, uh, like, subscribe, leave me a comment. Thanks so much for watching. You can catch us live. Uh, hit that follow button on Twitch.tv backslash Clantown. Links in the description. With that, we'll see you next time.